Putin won the political lottery. Unexpected triumph of Russia in the Middle East. Those who are convinced that Trump is useless for Russia should think again. The US president has just sharply strengthened Moscow's already not so flimsy political positions in the Middle East. Naturally, a politician who openly declares his incomparable wisdom in no way wished for such an outcome. But in fact, as a result of Trump's completely uncounted, feverish and contradictory actions, we have just such an outcome. On the one hand, America has quarreled with Turkey and even imposes sanctions against its formal NATO ally, though not the most biting ones. On the other hand, Trump rendered the Turkish leader Erdogan a full service, the Syrian Kurds, who were in close alliance with Washington and hated by Ankara, were actually abandoned by the Americans to their fate. Soberly assessing the consequences of this betrayal, the Kurds made the only possible decision for them in this situation, they went under the wing of the official president of Syria and Russia's main political partner Bashar al-Assad. What Washington won from this strange combination is completely unclear. What Moscow gained from this, on the contrary, lies on the surface. To say that Russia has replaced the United States as the dominant foreign player in the Middle East, of course, is not necessary, and I am sure it will not be necessary. We do not have the right resources for this, the wrong geopolitical and economic weight, the wrong baggage of historical political and economic ties. But now in a key Middle East region for the whole world, a situation has developed that would have been unthinkable during the time of Henry Kissinger and his active game of world geopolitical chess. The overweight giant named America got lost in three pines, the Trump administration does not keep pace with the course of events, is trying to develop its own political line on the go and as a result becomes more and more confused. At the same time, Russian diplomacy acts as a shop, which is everywhere rep. Moscow managed to find a certain point of balance of its interests with Turkey. The main idea, the fixation of Ankara, is by no means to prevent the emergence of an independent or even semi-independent Kurdish state in the region. Given the presence of a significant Kurdish minority in Turkey itself, according to Erdogan, any such autonomous entity is a mortal threat to his country. To prevent this threat, the Turkish leader is ready to enter into an alliance with anyone. In the past, this anyone was a group of ISIS banned in our country. Now in this role, let's call a spade a spade, we are speaking. Apparently, Putin was able to convince Erdogan that it would be more profitable for him if the Syrian Kurds, who had previously de facto independence, were again under the careful paternal, or in our current particular case, rather filial, control of President Assad. I broke my head, trying to understand why Trump made this combination possible by kindly withdrawing most of his troops from Syria. But, apparently, my level of wisdom is not the same. The maintenance in Syria of its limited contingent to the Americans, by and large, did not cost anything, neither in terms of finances, nor in terms of political costs. Perhaps some things do not even need to be sought to understand, they just need to be taken for granted. The fact is that, due to Trump's sluggishness, the power and real authority of Russia's main political partner in Syria has significantly strengthened. Another significant fragment has been added to the territory that the Assad regime controls in its country. I will repeat what I have already written about many times, we should not identify with Assad too closely. The alliance between Russia and the president of Syria is not based either on ardent mutual love or, as I suspect, even on especially strong mutual sympathy. However, in politics all these things are often successfully replaced by a coincidence of interests. Thanks to Russia, Assad was able to ensure his political and even physical survival. Thanks to Assad, Russia has developed an outpost in the region, which is the nerve center for the whole world. The sad truth is that after 2014, America was able to almost completely neutralize our diplomacy in Europe. In our country as native continent, we still have many partners who would like fundamentally different relations with Russia. But these partners either cannot or do not dare to do something real meaningful in this direction. Multiplied by the traditional antipathy to Moscow of some countries in the region, America's influence on the old world policy towards Russia is, we can safely say, almost paralyzing. In these conditions, Russia could respond to the United States only asymmetrically. 
aid to play in the Middle East has become one of Moscow's most successful asymmetric responses to America. Some other asymmetric response attempts have been not only ineffective, but even harmful. Now Russia actually plays the role of a universal mediator in the Middle East, a political broker, past which no one of the regional states sharply competing with each other can, neither Saudi Arabia, nor Iran, nor Israel, nor Turkey. This automatically increases the overall influence of Russia in the world. If something crisis happens in the Middle East, it immediately sounds in the farthest corners of the globe. A little higher, I mentioned Kissinger with admiration. But even Kissinger was not able to prevent the Arab energy boycott in the first half of the 70s, which put the economies of the United States and Western Europe on both sides. The unexpected lottery win, this is how Trump's mistake in Syria can be interpreted, further strengthened Moscow's position in the Middle East and hit America's prestige as a rational political player and reliable partner. The main thing now is not to fall into a state of excessive dizziness from success. In a region where even Kissinger can be trapped, this is deadly.